everyone. Chris here with Bryce's Spectrum Stories. Um, I want to make a little announcement. You'll hear in the podcast that Sandy was considering changing the name, which she had talked to me about before, uh, but we never talked to about it at length. So after the podcast, we got together and put our heads together, and we came up with Parenting Autism. Uh, We wanted a title that was a little more descriptive than Bryce's Spectrum story, so uh, we thought we landed on a great one. And so in the next couple of weeks, you'll see the title of the podcast change over to Parenting Autism, and I'm sure Sandy will put in the show notes about a new Facebook page and a new email and all that for you guys to keep in contact with us so on that note enjoy the show and going forward we will be parenting autism talk to you soon hey honey welcome back to another episode of bryce's spectrum stories hello hello and i am glad that we were able to carve out this time this afternoon while our little man is at school and i know we've been writing down you know, a few topics that we could kind of share as we're thinking about this podcast. We have a lot to share, so we have a lot. Seems like it, right? Yes, we do. Yeah, and I have been thinking about the podcast and even possibly changing the title of it at this point, which I'd kind of mentioned to you because I feel like the Bryce's Spectrum stories is great, but I really want this podcast to be about real life with autism, kind of like a reality show but a reality podcast Mm -hmm. where we're sharing our day-to-day of what it's like to live in the world of autism have you thought of a new title yeah i thought real life with autism (laughs) 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 that's not taken but anyway Uh, kind of like along the lines of i i want it to be where we're having conversations but our conversations are really sharing with the audience that tunes in uh that they get an insight as to what it's really like to live with autism in your home on a daily basis. So we'll look into what that takes to change. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just kind of mentioning it it because it's what I want to accomplish. Like when we set up in here, I know we put some bullet point notes down, but it really is about us just having this chance to reflect Mm -hmm. on the week that we've had Mm -hmm. and what's been happening in our world with autism and what, what are we doing now in our home? And yeah. And more specifically, what we'll talk about today too is like in our marriage Mm -hmm. because it's taken such a toll on us, Mm -hmm. you know, the last three years and what we're doing to help reconnect ourselves. Mm -hmm. And as we go on this journey, you know, so that's really what I hope that as people find us and that they listen to us, if they like reality TV, hopefully they'll be attracted to reality podcasts because that's really what we want to offer. It's not going to be a lot of interviews with a bunch of different parents. Not right now. Not right now. I don't feel like that's what the calling is. I think reality TV is even different than what we're doing because it's... It's a show, you know, we're not, we're not, well, we're not putting on a show and we want to keep it real, but you know what I'm saying? Like the day to day stuff. Hey, if you're entertained by us, more power to you. Keep listening. (laughs) Uh, But we don't have any uh, bells and whistles, you know, like the TV shows do that. No. And I'm not uh, even trying to say that that's what it would be or that it's being produced in that way. Yeah. But I just wanted to say, as you and I are talking, that we keep this as just real life. Oh yeah. That's what it is. And I know that uh, you had mentioned, what was I going to say that you're going to mention? You're going to say that we got our first review (laughs) on iTunes. That's what I wanted to mention. I knew it. Uh, This one is from Gigathreads. They gave us a five-star review. It says, you guys are an inspiration to all parents. Uh, So real and raw. You guys are incredible and love that you are sharing your story and letting us in. Helping parents along in this journey is what you guys are meant to do, exclamation points. I could listen to you both all day. So what a great compliment. And uh, Giga Threads, we appreciate your review. Yeah. And and those types of reviews are wh- what helps people find us online, you know. So uh, the more reviews we get, the better exposure we'll have to help other families. Yeah, and those kind of reviews and words like that also are the encouragement that 
I need to carve this time out to share. It is a little bit of therapy for me, mm-hmm. you know, but it's also really, it's, it's basically reaffirming that this is what we've been called to do is to share our world. Cause it's not easy. I'll be really straight yeah. up. It's not always easy to talk about these things, even um, with each other. You know, I like to stay on the happy tunes right. <laughs> channel and I can't always have a happy tune playing when I'm talking about the world of autism, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, so we're excited and we're excited to see what's going to happen in 2019. And yeah, we're excited about the next conference coming up that we're going to. It's the talk about curing autism now conference, which they have recently changed that acronym TACA to something else and I can't remember it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's um, starts Friday, March 22nd and uh, up in Atlanta. So we encourage anyone that uh, has somebody on the spectrum to attend that. It's going to be a bunch of uh, doctors in the know and uh, professors and they're going to be sharing their knowledge about autism on the medical side. So. I think there's also parents that will be speaking because I know Holly Robinson Pete is going mm-hmm. to be there, yep. and she has her foundation. And you know, I've seen and heard a little bit of her story. I know with their son, but I'm excited to be able to go and to just get better educated because mm-hmm. that's kind of my mission in life is to be the best parent and advocate that I can be for Bryce. I think we have like the baseline education now that he's yes. five and we're, we're ready to take a next step to help him. If there's new information out there that yeah. we believe that will help him. Yeah. Cause if you haven't heard our backstory, I mean, we would encourage you to go back and listen to the other episodes, but Bryce was diagnosed. It'll be three years in April. So we're about three years into this journey. Mm. So I feel like we have our feet on the ground in a lot of ways. And we're actually like in recovery mode from some of the initial tailspin (laughs) we experienced. Mm -hmm. But I I am excited about that. And I know you went down last night kind of like to a a prep meeting with a handful of parents that are going to be going for the first time and uh, a couple of the leaders that are very familiar with it. And it was really cool because you came home with a couple of nuggets and a handbook, um, which I thought was fantastic. And I had heard about that before and I was looking forward to getting it in Atlanta, but you actually came home with it. And I I think they can get it online at their website. They can look for it. It's T A C A now N O W dot com. I think taco now dot com. Uh, Anyway, it's a handbook for uh, when, when you first get your diagnosis and kind of different paths you can take to, try to help your child uh, who's been recently diagnosed. But another tip that they shared was uh, one of the things that they're doing is what's called a coffee talk at the end of day one. And that's where after all the speakers are done speaking, uh, they go to a a large room with, and they, they sit down at the table. So the doctors are there right across the table from you and you get uh, one-on-one time with them uh, to be able to ask them questions that may not have been answered during the conference. And uh, I guess every 15 minutes or whatever tables rotate, and you can go to the next doctor and so on and so forth. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah, that should be great. Did you take any way or take away, I should say, any nuggets last night specifically for Bryce? Or was it just more prep work for the conference? Um, as far as helping Bryce, mm-hmm. I mean... Uh, A lot of the people, they all happened to go to our church, Christ Fellowship, which was refreshing, (laughs) unbeknownst to me. But um, as far as Bryce goes, um, about half of them, I think, were on the gluten-free, casein-free diet. So I think we're going to take another look at that. And the the one uh, rep for Taka that was there, um, she most recently started the CBD oil uh, with her child, I'm, it's either seven or 10 years old. And so she's seen good results with that. But before we go down that road, you know, I'm the researcher, so I need to do all my research on that and, and find out. But she said that she's seen new words. Um, he apparently had trouble sleeping. So now he's sleeping better and she's seeing more words and more attention, focused attention. So all right. I was just curious if you got anything specifically that mm-hmm. was like, oh, that might 
be a help for Bryce. Yeah, it was more about talking about the speakers who are going to be at the That's conference. That's what I thought. Yeah. Well, let's segue into your card meeting then. What was an, something that you took away from that last month that yeah. we could apply with Bryce? Yeah, well, there was so much that I took away. but And I know information overload is a big problem for me. So I'm just going to share one nugget that I got from that conference so that people aren't overwhelmed with information. So one of the speakers went over the most effective techniques across all therapies. So he listed probably 10 techniques that are most successful in helping kids on the spectrum. Um, And I'm just going to share one of those uh, right now, and that is repetition. So if you have someone on the spectrum and they don't seem to be learning a task, um, break it down into smaller steps and or present it in different ways. So uh, visually, uh, verbally, and physically, you know, if you have to do hand over hand, which means you put your hand on their hand to help them do whatever they need to do. Um, And repetition is key to that. So doing it over and over again. And you want to make sure that they're in a frame of mind to learn. So during those teaching moments, uh, make sure that the, the child isn't under any anxiety, that they're in a comfortable environment, you know, and that they're they're able to focus with you. Um, and even doing these things in different environments, um, for example, brushing teeth, you know, help them at home in your bathroom or if they go over to sleep at grandma's or mamaw's, uh, take your toothbrush with them and and um brush their teeth in in her bathroom and uh, or if you stay at a hotel like we're going to be staying at the hotel for the conference you know he'll absolutely have his toothbrush and we'll be working with him in that hotel bathroom environment so we went away last weekend yeah and you created the photos of you did like the laminated sheet that yeah. has the photos of him. I think we went over that. We did, left. but yeah. I mean, we're talking about the repetition and mm-hmm. I'm just leading into that. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about Bryce and mm-hmm. I could see that I thought to take that and I just set it up on the bathroom oh, yeah. counter with his, you know, toothpaste and his toothbrush and it, he didn't miss a beat yeah. because he had that there. Right. The visual aid. But if yeah. you didn't have that visual aid, it might've thrown him off. Yeah. It could break the whole routine. So mm-hmm. You know, I'm just yeah. saying that is what works, and it's having those tools. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the the more they learn whatever the task is, the less repetition you can back off of the repetition, and eventually they'll be able to do it by themselves. Yeah, and it's kind of ironic and great that his school, they sent home this paper this week that had a picture of a the sun and a picture of the moon, and he has to color the sun in the morning when he brushes his teeth mm-hmm. and color yellow and then take the blue crayon and color the moon at night when he brushes his teeth at night, which is really cool because they had no idea that one of my goals was to teach him to brush his teeth independently twice a day. But it's like all these little tools are coming in. And mm-hmm. I think that may be a good tool to share with other parents who are trying to teach their children that because it was like an additional visual aid for him Mm -hmm. but it was also like the reminder because you know we had the pressure of you have to send this back to school every day Mm -hmm. yeah but it was good because then it's like okay you have to brush your teeth in the morning color your sun now you need to brush them at night color your moon and you know doing that seven days in a row and then do it another week and another week then he can develop that habit so Uh, yeah and you brought up a good point that they're doing it at school so anytime that they're doing an activity at school that you can piggyback on to get that extra repetition. It's gold, you know, because if you've got more than one person working on that, then your odds of success sooner are going to be greater. Yep. So this week we had another interesting pop-up. It really was like a pop-up. We've had some issues in the fall with our insurance. Once price turned five, things changed and we had different insurance company. And so then he lost some of his services and we had applied to get him maybe something through disability uh, insurance because he does have a disability. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so anyway, one of the requirements was that he had to have an IQ test 
and psychological, psychological evaluation. evaluation. Mm-hmm. So with our story, Bryce was diagnosed by a neurologist and he never had to sit down with us present with a psychologist, even when he went to the early steps and they were in the room with him and doing, you know, just kind of observations. It's never been with a psychologist. And so I think they did something through the school board, but that was a couple of years mm-hmm. ago and it's all kind of came up. So anyway, so Monday, Chris, I'm at work and he sends me a text and said, I got to take Bryce to the psychologist this afternoon. I mean, like no warning. And yeah. I'm, we met for lunch and we filled out a ton of paperwork and answered a lot of questions. And so I didn't get to go because again, I can't just up and go to a two hour doctor's appointment with no warning on a Monday, especially, but it was interesting. And so, you know, I'm was very curious as to how it all went down, which I'd probably would still like to know some, but I, I know you said that he was asking him some questions and even the questions that you said he asked doesn't make sense to me from an IQ standpoint, like the question of what's mommy's other name, what's daddy's other name. I don't, I'm really not sure what that would have to do with IQ. I, I think some of the questions that he was asking him were just to get his attention focused. And then he, like he would hold up a pen. What is this? You know, okay. it's pen. What color is it? It's blue. Okay. Uh, but he did a lot of work with pictures. Um, like um, they might have shown four pictures. Uh, which one is the insect? Um, okay. And then, like, let's say they showed uh, two insects and a bicycle. And then down below, you had four pictures. And one of them was a bicycle. And so you got two insects, one bicycle. What goes in the blank square? Well, the way we would think about it is the bicycle. Right. So he had to pick from those four squares what okay. logically would go okay. in that pattern. And then he also worked with them with uh, blocks that had different patterns on them. So he would um, stack the blocks in a certain way. He would change the pattern. Okay, match the pattern so that it looks like this set of blocks. So he did, and he would so time. Matching type he would of time things. him on those things to see how long it would take him to process that and do it uh, if he did it. How at did all. he do? How did he do? Um, well, it's the easier ones he completed. Um, some of the other ones he got distracted, probably because he didn't know how to do it. Um, so, you know, I don't know the results of the right. report yet. So okay. So as you. <clears throat> But he did say that he he feels like Bryce has some ADHD, which is common yeah. with kids on the spectrum. And he could see that when he was doing the test. And he says, I really think that his ADHD is affecting his IQ sto- score because he is so distracted with other things in the room. Like there was a pencil sharpener that he had never seen before. So he's like, what's that? And they had one of those robot vacuums, uh, like what we have here at home. And so he's like, what's that? And, you know, looking around the room instead of really paying attention to what was, what he was yeah. supposed and you, to be doing. And you said he's going to give him a formal diagnosis of ADHD? Yeah, he said he's probably going to add that to his uh, diagnosis report. So um, Th- That was not a surprise to me. It's not. No. I've already told you that I knew he had ADD and the H has been emerging. Yeah. <laughs> About yeah. the past eight or nine months. I'm like, I'm seeing some H added and I, to and that I, ADD I there. I asked him that. I said, you know, we saw him afterwards and I said, did you just mean ADD or ADHD, the hyperactivity? Uh, and he said ADHD. He says, I did see the hyperactivity along with the attention so, yeah, um, I said, okay. Yeah, so. no problem. Well, I appreciate you sharing more with me. As the listeners can tell, I, I really didn't know everything that had yeah. happened either. And that's because, quite honestly, when do we have time to sit I and know. talk, talk about, about this stuff in detail? Talk about thing, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I, I appreciate that. That gives me a little, a little more of a visual as to what he was doing and how he was testing his IQ and stuff. And, yeah, you know, I'm not sweating the small stuff. I'm not sweating. It is what it is. It is what you it know, is. And God's in control. We'll just We're keep not, trying. Yeah. To, and, and I have no problem that <laughs> he's got an extra diagnosis. That's just affirming what I've been witnessing. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm all about 
Let's get him the help that he needs. And if that needs to be coming from a doctor on a piece of paper, I don't consider that labeling my child. I can, I, for me personally, I consider that giving him the opportunity to get all the help that he needs. Mm -hmm. So, and us to be able to do the research that we need to do as parents uh, to help him any way that we can. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that made for an interesting beginning to the week. And then another thing I thought, you know, we'd talk about and share as well is the class that we have started at church, the Mm re-engage class. Uh, Because, you know, we're saying it it is hard for us to have quality time together. And I think any parent that's listening that has a child on the spectrum can relate to this. Uh, I mean, we should all... I was just said we should all have a great vetting process as to who we leave our children with. Mm-hmm. But I think when you have a child that is has autism and still can't quite communicate, communicate and have a, you know, a conversation to express everything, you just have to vet a little deeper. And that has left us with an extremely short list of mostly uh, family. Yeah. And also, mm-hmm. you know, taking him to places that are public and at church on Sundays, we have the buddy there that we've mentioned before, you know, the special class, which is great. But for this particular class on Tuesday nights, they offered childcare. And we're like, well, how's that going to go down? Because mm-hmm. he's not going to have his buddy there, Miss Debbie. And that he, you know, we didn't know how many kids would be there and what kind of environment it would be as far as like the the noise level and all the busyness and the personalities and all of that. So when we got there, uh, this would have been two weeks ago when we went for the first time, he was very hesitant. We were trying to prep him and you had a great idea because we had purchased those tennis shoes at the same time we got his shoes for the wedding. Mm-hmm. They had like the sale, like buy one, get one. So we said, well, let's pick up these tennis shoes for him to grow into and they light up and they have Lightning McQueen on yeah. them. And so you said, well, maybe we can introduce him to the tennis shoes. And I'm like, yes, that's great. These can be his special church shoes on yep. t- Tuesday church shoes. And he can only wear them on Tuesdays right. to church. That was a winner. That got him out For the sure. door because he didn't even want to leave the house. Yeah. Don't leave the Coulter Hotel. Mm. No, you get to wear your church Tuesday shoes. And they lit up. And he was very excited about that. And probably ran into the wall a couple times because he keeps looking down and his <laughs> shoes light up. <laughs> Um, so then when we got there, he was still a little hesitant and he was saying, you know, daddy, go with me. But when we got there, it was such a relief for me that I saw, actually Bryce saw her first. He saw a little girl from one of his classes, from Mm -hmm. his school classroom. And so he saw her and he said her name and I looked and I'm like, oh. I do know her. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so then I just asked her, I said, you know, would you play with Bryce tonight? And he was so happy to have her there. Mm-hmm. And so then the next week he was assuming she would be there because he was asking for her by name. Let me tell you, we prayed, mm-hmm. Lord, please let this little girl and her parents be there for whatever need that they have. Let them be there. Mm-hmm. And she was. And then this past Tuesday, when we went, we actually got to meet her parents when they ask about our son. And we told them, we've been praying for you to be here. And it's such an answer to our prayer. So that was really cool because he is now walking in the classroom with no hesitation. Mm -hmm. He's got his cool shoes on. He knows his little friend's going to be there. He's familiar with the room. And again, if any of you parents deal with what we deal with, it's a big deal. Yeah. It's a big deal that he doesn't have the anxiety and that, you know, he's not upset. In fact, we saw that ADHD in full form when we picked him up. He was like jumping up and down on the pillow saying cannon bomb or something, mm. cannonball. So mm. he's happy. He was good. We picked him up. And that helps us because we really know that we were supposed to attend this class together. In fact, when you got the email and I got the email separately and I was planning on telling you about it. And before I could, you had already responded back to me and said, I signed us up. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, great. And, you know, it's it's pretty cool. It's great. And it's great timing. And it's great that our church even offers this. What it is, is it's basically, it doesn't matter where you're at in your marriage. And there's some people that, you know, they you can rate your marriage one to ten. There's some people that are there that have rated it a one being the lowest point. And some that rated as a 10 
but they're always looking for a way to build upon the marriage. And I, you know, when we were asked to rate ours, we don't have a bad marriage and I'm so grateful for that, but it definitely needs a little fine tuning in the communication department and Mm -hmm. the quality time department. And those are the two areas that kind of go hand in hand that we're focused on for 2019. And so this is like a beautiful resource and it's, is it 16 weeks that mm-hmm. the class is 16 weeks. plus the two starter weeks? So, I mean, mm-hmm. we're in this for a few months, yeah. you know, ahead. And I understand it's going to get a little deeper, but, you know, but Chris and I were talking and we were saying that this should be something that we share because it may help other couples yeah. out there and other families. When, when we find just from, you know, different people posting and different groups that, um, marriages suffer when you have someone on the spectrum, you know, that's diagnosed in, in your marriage and because it's hard, you know, some parents, one might not want to accept the diagnosis while the other one does. Uh, they may not be on the same page as far as treatments or trying to right. help the child and, It really strains a lot of marriages uh, from what we've seen. And so we really want to try to help other people the way we're being helped uh, through our church. So I just want to share um, what they did on week one, which they had a testimony, which was great. Um, And then we broke into um, smaller groups and the, the takeaway from week one was to start praying together. So, you know, this is just Sandy and I, uh, you know, we don't, everybody has different beliefs. We're Christians and we go to church, you know. So if you don't go to church or this may not apply to you, but we really encourage you um, to to do, to go to church, to pray together. Um, this Just the statistics show alone that, people that aren't in church and are married, you know, it's a 50% divorce rate, you know, even without somebody on the spectrum being part of the relationship, you know, so, um, marriages need all the help they can get, you know, it's, it's not an easy street. It takes work, you know, for everybody. So, um, so the, uh, week one was to pray together. So, um, Sandy and I, we normally pray at meals, you know, uh, but we wanted to pray separately in the morning or together, but have a, you know, separate prayer time in the morning. Uh, so now every morning, uh, before she goes off to work and, and I, I do my stuff here that, um, that we, we pray and we pray about the day. We pray for Bryce and uh, family and, and whatever else comes to mind that, you know, we can pray well, for. And I want to, I, I mean, I want to yeah. chime in for you to the next one because I want to keep it very real here. It all sounds like, oh yeah. And they figured that out. That was so easy. And that's so easy for me. You know, like somebody might be thinking that it, that was not easy. When they said that my first thought was really when, when are we going to, when am I, when am I supposed to put that mm-hmm. in my day that we're going to pray together because right now I'm doing my best to get up 15 minutes earlier before you and Bryce get up so that I can find some quiet time and that I can get in my prayer journal. And I thought, when is this even supposed to happen? Mm -hmm. Because by the time I get home and then he comes home from school and then we have that routine and it's not going to be at bedtime because you're just exhausted and it wouldn't be an effective prayer. Right. That's for sure. So when we came up with the idea of, when are we together? We are together in the car five days a week when we drop Bryce off from school mm-hmm. and we come back yep. and we have quiet time there. And it's a five minute drive, but five minutes is fine. And yeah. sometimes depending how we're running on time, as soon as we get back, I have to turn around and leave and go into the office. But sometimes we have five minutes so I can come in the house. Mm-hmm. But if not, then I could pray in the car as you're driving on the way home. Right. And then if there's more time, we'll come inside. You know, and I know you mentioned that we pray at meals, but really the prayers at the meals are, dear God, bless this food. Amen. Because right, we know right. we're supposed to pray and ask God to bless the food. And I'm yeah. not knocking that, but I do have a little bit of conviction. This is me just talking to you personally. I have a little bit of conviction that Yes, we're stopping to acknowledge him, but there should be more to our prayers than just 
bless his food. Yeah. You know, if there's somebody well, we that's hurt, in. I know. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. And then even like when we're praying together, what I see this as is, yes, you start the groundwork. And if you can grab two minutes together, mm-hmm. three minutes together, beautiful, five minutes together, great. But my goal for us is that we will expand upon this and that it's not just give Sandy a good day, give Bryce a good day, give me a good day. No, let's pray about our marriage. Let's mm-hmm. pray about what it is that we just read in the word that we can apply to our lives. Speaking of that, um, we've also incorporated yeah. reading the Bible on the way to or from dropping Bryce off yeah. at school. So not we only are we praying, week. yeah, we're we're reading the word. So I don't know, what are you reading? A chapter? Well or, So the uh, way that I've have found to be the best way to read for me personally. Our church taught us the SOAP method. So it's kind of like an uh, the acronym thing, but it's like you read the scripture and then you observe something from it. Then you, how can you apply what you observe to your life? And then you pray and meditate on it to apply to your life. Chris, when he reads, I mean, like you told me, you read, like I said, well, how do you read? And he's mm. like, oh, I read like a f- couple pages. Uh, two to four pages. Two to four pages. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, and no, then, that's not going to work for me because I can't grasp anything out of that because it's too much it's too much information in in a short period of time and i want to study it not Mm -hmm. just read it right i want to soak it in i want it to Mm -hmm. if i'm going to make the time to invest in reading whether it's reading the bible whether it's reading an article whether it's reading a different kind of book i have to take it in smaller doses or other i I don't want to skim read and i don't want to miss the points so in most Bibles and in the Bible that we have, they have been kind enough to kind of break it down into stories. So, so many verses and they'll have a title above it. That's what I try to stick within. So I don't do just one verse at a time unless God's like laying that on my heart. I will do whatever like that little story is or mm-hmm. that little paragraph, so to speak. You know, And then we can talk about after you're done reading that, then we get to talk about, okay, what stuck out yeah. in that passage, you know, and Usually there's two or three things that we can talk about and then take that into Haven't you day. found that to be helpful? Mm-hmm, yeah. I mean, rather than just reading now, two or four now pages. Now that we're doing that, it's it's better for me. Yeah, because I, I think you're going to get so much more that. out of that. Yeah. I mean, the Bible is so big and it just seems like a monster to read. And you kind of you want to get through it, but you also want to absorb what's in it. And um so this this is a better way that you've introduced me to of of um, just absorbing more. Yeah, I, I think that's been great this week, mm-hmm. and we've you know, and we're reading it on the way there. So Bryce is hearing it, yeah, which is great too. And I don't know how much of it he understands, but he's actually been very quiet. Mm-hmm. He hasn't interrupted us, and and we're trying to read to Bryce more and get him to read books. Right. So for him to even hear and see me reading from a book Mm -hmm. it's kind of funny he told me he only reads the bible on sundays but you know i said well honey you can read it every day but he has associated that with sundays for his bible well they say even if your child can't read or doesn't want to read with you if you just read aloud in the room uh they do get something out of that even if they're not following along with the book they they get something and even with it a a non-spiritual takeaway for him from for him is He's hearing someone talk in sentences with Mm -hmm. proper, you know, punctuation, Mm -hmm. grammar and inflection and all of that. So that's been really good. And, you know, I don't I'm not sure that was even part of the assignment, but I know when we talked last week and our group, it came up and we you had said, you know, I want us to read together more. And actually, for me, guess what? I get to sleep in 15 minutes longer because I don't have to try to get up. And do that before you guys get up, because mm-hmm. I know that we're going to be doing that in the car. Mm-hmm. So it's like a gift of sleep for me, mm-hmm. in addition to us growing together, you know, yeah. in, in, there's, in our marriage, in our marriage yeah. and in our foundation of our marriage into God. So that was good stuff. What was the other thing? Uh, week two was um, says the challenge for this week. It says in humility, ask your spouse to share with you one area which you are meeting and or exceeding their expectations and one area in which you feel sadness, disappointment, frustration, or anger, uh, try to meet their need in a practical way this week. So it's, it's just becoming real with your spouse. Like, Hey, I really appreciate you doing this. And 
you know, we can't take things for granted, even the small things and everything counts in a marriage. So, um, absolutely praise your spouse for, for areas that you think they're just being awesome. And it said, you know, just come up with the thing that, that you feel disappointment or frustration over, you know, because your spouse may not even know that or not that's, mind readers. Yeah. Nobody's, especially guys. We can't read. Minds. <laughs> the ladies uh, aren't either. But, they, and actually the ladies are the ones that set these expectations that they've seen either on the Hallmark channel or a movie right. or somewhere else. Hollywood. And they ex- really, you know, I think females have certain expectations and then I think that the husbands have certain expectations. Yeah, and we can't, uh, you can't have expectations like that in a marriage, you know. No. So if you're honest with your spouse, you know, and you work uh, toward that and you pray about it, um, you know, those things will come together for the good. Yeah, and believe me, we've got a lot. I know we're going to learn a lot through this. And again, we have a great marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But and why settle for great when you can have even better, fantastic and yeah. phenomenal, right? Yeah. Let's work so, toward that. So we'll be sharing uh, the bits and pieces that we get through this course. And and listen, if you're interested in church and you just haven't gotten there, um, by all means, uh, look our church up online. It's gochristfellowship.com. And you can watch services online if you can't get to church on a Sunday. Um, And you can even watch uh, prior services. So if you're working on a Sunday, you can always go back. They have a a podcast app, I think. They uh, They do. A church app. They have a podcast app. They also have it on the website where you can go back and listen to prior messages. They have them like by title. And I understand, listen, we found our church because we were in a position to where it was difficult for us to attend church. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were in the cry room and we couldn't get the message. Yeah. And we had the situation with crying. Brian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. And, and you know, we had medical issues with Bryce when he was a baby yeah. and we couldn't go. So we found Christ fellowship, which was fantastic. And at least we were getting something. And I know then with autism, it's a whole other thing because if you don't have the right, child care there you feel like you can't go Mm -hmm. and not every church in america has has what we have at our church so a lot of people even who are christians don't attend church exactly it's not because you don't somebody on the spectrum right it's not because you don't want to it's just because you feel like you can't you don't have the resources to watch your child to go yeah so anyway if you are looking for a church online we'll put the link in our show notes and if you guys ever have any questions about that, we'd be happy to talk further with you about that. You can contact us through our email, which I also have in the show notes, and uh, we would love to hear from you. So just uh, a couple other things, and we can wrap up here for what's been going on in the past you know, week or two, is we had an exciting day with Bryce on Saturday at the little Italian festival that was in town. He's got that app on his iPad that, I guess it must be like a it's carnival an fair, park. an yeah. amusement park. And I was wondering where this request to ride a Ferris wheel was coming from. Because <laughs> he kept saying he wanted to ride a Ferris wheel. And I'm like, where has he even seen a Ferris wheel? And our annual county fair is coming up later this month. And so we've had on our calendar for the 28th that we're going to be going to the big carnival fair. And he'll get to ride a Ferris wheel. And Do you hear that blue jay in the background? Yeah, I can hear him squawking. Like right outside our window going, all right, give me some food. Oh, uh, goodness. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. So, um, so anyway, so when we went to uh, the condo this weekend, they had the Italian festival. And sure enough, they had a Ferris wheel there, which was a great surprise for Bryce. And so I was so proud of him because a big thing with him is his anxiety. And I know last year when we took him to the fair, he wanted nothing to do with the rides whatsoever. He did a little okay at Disney. But this was a big test to go up in the sky like that. And Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the highest he's ever been off the ground. It's definitely the highest, you know, in that form. Yeah. I saw his little wheels spinning around as he was studying. Yeah, he like showed no emotion. It was just so serious. I even had to tell him to look out over the the water and the cars. I think, yeah, he was trying to figure out the mechanics of I it. I think so. I really do. But that was that And then was he saw the cars and, you know, the bridge and the water. Yeah. 
he still didn't say much. And mm. then when we got down and we got off, he's like, he did it. Yeah. He did it. He yeah. wrote the Ferris wheel, yeah. referring to himself. And then he wanted to do to it again. So it, it's really good and exciting. And that's a big thing also like with, he doesn't have really occupational therapy in a physical sense anymore. Right. So when, since we started, stopped that last summer. And I know, you know, because big of insurance. Right, right. Um, big movements, small movements, all mm. that plays in. And so for me, that was like a major victory for him. Yeah. That, Plus, he wanted to go on that other swing yeah, we that did this, went round and round. Yeah. Uh, kind of like a carousel, but only a lot faster. Yeah. Than, uh, and, and that's different than the car- go kart, which, you know, he loves yeah. the go kart. And we took him again for that. But for same Valentine's. thing. Uh, the swing, he had no yep. facial expressions. He was just going around and around and around. and. But when he's done, he's all excited. He's done. And then he tells everybody about it. So yeah. you know that he's excited about but it. But then he wanted to, I gave him a choice between that and the Ferris wheel. And then he wanted to go back to the Ferris wheel. So I think he his preference is the Ferris yeah. wheel. It'll be interesting to yeah. see what he chooses <clears throat> at the fair. So that was just something fun. And to me, definitely progress. And, you know, I heard somebody say the other day on an autism podcast, a win for one is a win for all. So that was a win for Bryce. So that's a win for all mm-hmm. the little kids who struggle with that. And we're making great progress in the reading department with the little blue book. And he has just this week alone shown so much more little blue truck book. why yeah. did i say that the little, little blue, blue truck yeah. books that's what i he meant thank you and uh we had found we had got the one and then you noticed on the back that there was a companion book mm-hmm. so we got that from the library and he loves that and too. he loves that and he wants to read them both every night so we're on a roll we're checking out the author to find out what other books she has and we know they'll be along the same lines they may not have a blue truck in them but uh, maybe he'll take interest in that. Yeah, well. so it's just exciting to see him beginning to take interest, and I think that's going to help him with you know his conversation and his language yeah, development reading, yeah. and all of those good things. And so there's just been a lot of really great things. Um, you know, I mean, keeping it real and the reality of this is we had a couple of uh, meltdowns, and in Bryce's case, his meltdowns. Really, it's not really anger, although he has developed this new thing where he likes to hit object like a wall, like he's frustrated, you know, and I get it. So he want he he will actually look and intentionally find like, what can I hit? Fine. I'll hit the arm of the couch. I'll I'll hit the wall, you know, and it's kind of to get our attention and to get his frustration out about something. But really, when Bryce gets upset about something, it's it's not hitting and it's not anger and it's not lashing out. He cries and he cries big crocodile tears and it's very devastating. And, you know, again, sometimes we have no idea what triggers it. We do know that it triggers when he's tired. So if he doesn't get enough sleep the night before, that leaves him vulnerable in the morning. And if it's past that window of eight o'clock and something triggers eight o'clock at night, uh, then that can definitely set it off. He doesn't seem to have nearly as many during the day. But I mean, that one the other night with the Alexa, someone had purchased me an Alexa as a gift for Christmas. So we really don't know much about it. But all of a sudden, he's asking for the yellow light on Alexa. We have no... I, I pay no attention other than I know that when you say her name, there's a blue light that comes on. That's all I've known. Well, he starts asking for the yellow light and we're saying, we, we don't know about a yellow light for Alexa. Then you could see, you know, the lip yeah, waver and the it. tears are starting to come. And he's like, well, the yellow light, need the yellow light, need the yellow light, Alexa. Honey, I don't know about this. So then Chris is, you're asking Alexa, Alexa, what's the yellow light mean? And she's saying, oh, it just means you have a notification or a message. Well, first she says... I'm sorry. I don't know what that is. I'm still something. learning. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, anyway. uh, yeah. So then I'm like, well, if it's from a notification or a message, I'll email you and maybe it'll give it because it, maybe we thought it was tied to your phone and uh, that didn't work. Yeah. So it didn't come on. So I really, it, it went south. It went south fast and it went south hard and we had to console him and it wasn't going to come back on. So we just had to tell him that it would come on the next day after the sun came up. Everything is after the sun comes up. I had to console him on the couch and rock him and soothe him to where he could get calm. He did not want to go to the bedroom when we thought he was calm enough that started back up. So, you know, we just had to get him to sleep on the couch. 
I was really concerned about the next morning because I knew the first thing he would want would be the yellow light on Alexa. It was the third request that he made before we even left the bed, but he had got enough sleep and rest that he was okay. And we told him it would come on later. Uh, But you know, it's those kind of triggers that people don't see in our world that it's real and it's, it's hard. And where Bryce appears to be somewhat this normal little boy, you know, and I've had a couple people this week indicate like, are you, you know, like the kind of question well, listen, about him. And it's hard. If you spend five minutes with Bryce, you, you he's gonna probably seem, won't right. know that he's got autism. But guess what? If you spend 24 hours with him, you'll be like, okay, here he is. He's back to you now. Yeah. yeah and and so. that's really, that happened like with two friends this week. And so I just get it that people don't get it. And I have a lot of grace and forgiveness for that. <clears throat> sure. But they just don't realize. this podcast for me is part of that outlet of it is real and this is what we deal with. Mm-hmm. And yes, I know that every child, whether they have autism or not, parents deal with stuff. But I'm pretty sure that they would be in agreement if we traded for mm-hmm. 24 hours, 48 hours that, yeah, you guys have it on another level because yeah. it's very difficult when a child can't explain it and you're trying to crack codes and, and encrypt it, you know, and. And then with his grilled cheese in the morning, we had the same thing. I mean, we're trying to be ahead of a schedule. So you're like, go ahead and make it. He wants grilled cheese for breakfast, which that may sound weird to some people. But hey, he wants to eat it. I don't care what time of day he eats. That's what he wants for breakfast. So I went ahead and I made it. Oh, well, he wanted to be a part of the making the grilled cheese process. So So that was a moment. We had to start over. The tears were there. And he (laughs) we had to hide the first sandwich because he didn't even want to see it because that was a reminder like oh no right. no we have to start so from we scratch had to make a whole other sandwich and then, and then we, we snuck the other, one in, the there other one in there as like if he thought made we made the second yeah, one yeah so. so that was good but you know it's like those kind of things that i don't want to neglect on this podcast because it's real and for those who do get it then i want you to know you're not alone because i'm going to tell you that this world of autism can feel very isolating at times. And even three years later, there's times that I just wonder, does anybody really understand and get what I'm going through? But then I'll hear another parent share their story that has a child on the spectrum with things that are similar to Bryce. Of course, every child is different, but they're similar. And I thought they get it. They get it. And when I hear them, I just want to hug them through whether it's in person, I do hug them. And if it's somebody that I'm listening to, I want to hug them through, you know, the radio or the speaker because I so get it. And, you know, it can make me cry at times, but there's so much joy in it. But yet, you know, when those things are happening, it's very real. And the last thing I'm going to bring up and then we can wrap for this in this segment. But, you know, uh, when you picked them up from school the other day and you came home and you said, so there was a report back from the school today that Bryce was saying some things that were inappropriate and that kids were having them him say it and that they were laughing at him. You know, it's really not what you want to hear. And it's actually, and I got more story to it, but that's how it was introduced to me. And you're like, I'm very sad about this. You know, I want, what do you think? And I'm like, you know, and you said, do you think that's bullying? And I'm like, well, I feel like that word term bullying has been kind of magnified and overplayed since what I viewed as bullying as a kid. But do I think that if somebody was intentionally getting him to do and say things so that they could laugh at it's him and not with him, yeah. then that's that's a form of picking advantage. on. It's taking advantage of him being naive and his, his issues and his behaviors. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we were both a little sad about that. But I thought, well, let me ask the teacher because I didn't hear it firsthand. And I was very curious as to, and I didn't need names. That didn't matter. But when she said it was a few, my question to her was, was it these two friends? And I did give her those names that I think Bryce really has recognized as friends. Because remember, in this world, for him to even understand social and friends is a big deal. And he misses social cues. That is one of the biggest things with autism is they miss social cues. They don't understand that. And, you know, I would be extra sad if it was one of the two that he considers his friends that were doing this, but it wasn't. She said it was others, and that's all I needed to know. And she said, I don't really think they see him as different. I don't think they were doing it because of that. They just know that it's funny. I mean, and what they were saying was, I mean, some of it was as silly as telling him to say hi to a trash can, okay? But when you hear Bryce say it, he's like, Hi, trash can. Hi, trash can. And when Bryce thinks you're laughing at him, he's going to keep doing it. So 
you know, they had him saying hi to a trash can. I don't know what else they had. He's saying hi, trash can at home. So I know that's yeah. one of the things that they did. And then hi, poopy. That yeah. was the other one. You know, and I guess these boys, you know, yeah. they use like boys. potty talk and they're boys yeah. and they find that word funny. And if you can get a kid to say it over and over again and say it the way Bryce says it with hi, poopy, hi, poopy, yeah. you know, they find that funny. You know, my mama bear comes out like, hey, don't be making fun of my boy. Yeah. But they're five, you know, four and five years old. They're figuring it out. This is kind of this, where I take from this is like this particular incident. It's not a big deal. And actually, his teacher was fantastic. She sat all of the kids down. She explained, you know, that you don't get your friends to do things like that. She handled it beautifully. And I'm glad that she told us because she knows we want to work with Bryce on these things at home. And it is going to be a big challenge for us to teach him social cues and when somebody's really your friend and when someone's using you, whether it's to use you to do their dirty work or whether they're using you to make fun of you and get a laugh. You know, we've all seen it. We've all experienced it. We all grew up with a kid that kind of was a little different and got picked on. And I know that's a snapshot into our future, just depending where we have Bryce. And that's you know, and what environment he's in. And that's why Chris and I take this challenge of choosing the right school for him and the right circles for him very seriously. And we're not taking it lightly with him going into kindergarten, which I'm sure we'll be sharing as we make progress on this journey. But, you know, the good news is that this was not as serious as maybe I thought it may have been if they really were doing this because they see him as different. Because the reality is, as Bryce gets older... It's going to become more and more apparent that he is different from his peers the same age as him. And that's just a fact. And I just accept that. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to do my best to try to help diminish that to where it's a lot smaller and not as obvious. And that's why Chris and I are investing in taking these classes and talking to expert and talking to parents and talking to therapists and reading and listening to podcasts and doing everything that we can as his advocates and as his parents and as the people that were chosen to bring him up in this world that can be a very cruel world. We're here to help him have the best life he can possibly have to be happy and to protect him from people who may prey upon him and his innocence, because that's, he's going to be very innocent, probably longer than the average child. And um, I just really feel that laying on my heart today that I have to share that because that's a part of our reality as well. And something that we're going to have constant awareness of and something that we're going to have to deal with on a daily basis. But um, again, you know, a big shout out to his teachers and that God did lead us to where he is because he is in safe environments. And actually the last thing adding in there is we were able to observe his other classroom on Friday and see how he interacts there with the other kids and the teachers. And that's at the public school. And, you know, he did great and he loves it and he enjoys it, but I'm watching him and he didn't know we were observing, which was great. So we weren't not a distraction, but I saw him over there, um, you know, taking his scissors and cutting out the paper. And, and then when he was done, he stood up and he starts flapping his arms up and down. He's like, he did it. He did it because he was so proud of himself for cutting the paper. And that goes over fine in the class that he's in. It's a special needs class, you know, a special ed. But how's that going to work in kindergarten? I mean, is he going to be able to stand up and jump up and down every time that he's proud of himself for an accomplishment? Because that can't happen, especially if we put him in a regular kindergarten classroom with 25 students and the teacher, you know, he can't be the that distraction, you know, that sort of thing. So there's a there's a big road ahead for us, but I am extremely grateful for where he's at right now. And I feel like he just has the best team working with him. And uh, I know God's going to continue to lead us along. Awesome. Yeah, that's a good way to wrap up. I actually started another Facebook page called World Autism Forum. And I figured, well, it's not just people in Florida, it's people all over the world that have this. So uh, if you feel led, Come on over to that and join our group there. It's just started, so I think it's just me and Sandy in there right now. But 
Uh, I'm posting uh, tidbits, helpful tidbits almost daily on there uh, about autism. So feel free to chime in and, and come over and join. Uh, the website, the other website I was trying to think of is the Florida Autism Forum.com, and that's also the name of the Facebook page, Florida Autism Forum. So if you want to join that group, if you're in Florida, I post things about Florida in there specifically, like, uh, you know, things that might be specific to our area in regards to autism. So um, please leave us a review out there and subscribe if you like our podcast and uh, and share it if with other people that may benefit, benefit. from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. Know. If you know somebody that's going through any of the topics that we covered, I mean, definitely share it with them. And uh, with that, we'll wrap it up this time, and we'll see you next time. Okay, have a great one. See ya.